Well, we're following breaking news. Rescuers are now planning a last-ditch effort to airlift and save a stranded young orca off the coast of Vancouver Island. The animal has been trapped in a shallow lagoon for more than a week, unable to escape because of low tides and a sandbar. Its pregnant mother became breached and died while hunting, uh, while seal hunting. Rescuers have tried to tech, uh, many techniques, that is, to save the young orca over the last several days from banging metal pipes to playing whale recordings to urge the calf out to open waters. My next guest has been working hard to get the calf out. Paul Cottrell is a marine mammal rescuer coordinator with Fisheries and Oceans Canada. He joins me from Zabeos, uh, British Columbia. So, Paul, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, le let's talk about your, your team, which is actively monitoring the calf. What's the latest on her condition? Yeah, so we had drones up in the air today to uh, monitor and assess the calf, and we're taking pictures uh, daily to get uh, uh, through, looked at through photogrammetry by photogrammetry experts just to make sure that the animal's body condition and health is, is, uh, is not deteriorating. We, we've heard that your team is actively trying to uh, feed the calf. How are those efforts going? Yeah, so we were just looking to see if there was a possibility about supplementing the diet of this animal. There's, um, you know, in terms of marine mammals, there's a, the, the odd seal in this uh, tidal lagoon, but overall, um, there's there's not a lot of food there for this animal. And the animal was seen um, earlier in the week um, ingesting a bird, so it, it is actively looking for food. So how concerning is it that the calf is not eating regularly uh, and, and that humans need to step in to coax her to eat? Okay, I think we've lost uh, our... Uh, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Could you say that again? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering uh, if it's concerning yes. to you that, uh, you know, he, uh, the calf is not eating as regularly. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, that's, we, um, the goal has been to, to try to persuade the calf out of the lagoon the past week or so using techniques that have been successful previously, but unfortunately that hasn't worked. So yeah, we, we are concerned that the time's ticking with this animal and that's why we're monitoring its, its health and assessing that and, and also putting in place, um, capture and transport, um, uh, plan to in in case we have to move this animal and try to reunite it with its pod. So talk to me a little bit more about that capture and transfer uh, protocol. What what would that look like? So we've got uh, you know many different options within that, but uh, you know the um, you know the logist log sorry the, the logistics are still being worked out in terms of. Uh, the equipment and the personnel, and we're we're looking at bringing in some additional experts. Um, yeah, it would it would involve uh, looking at the animal, and then transporting the animal um, further. Um, you know, there's a few different modes that we could look at for doing that by by net pen and, uh, or by uh, transport to the outer coast where the animal's more likely to um, then meet up with its its family pod. So we're, we're looking at all those contingencies and you can imagine this is a short time frame for us to put this together. Yeah. So we're, um, we're still working on the, all the details. Uh, let me ask you this and we'll tell the audience uh, at home right now that you know, the connection's not uh, the, the best here because obviously you're in, you're in very rural uh, BC. But in, in terms of the timeline and how much of a race against time is this, how long do you think that you have to get this calf to safety, to open waters uh, before time will run out? Yeah, so that's why we're we're doing drone imaging and, and photographing the the calf daily to monitor its health and, and assess it. Uh, so right now, the the animal, in terms of the activity level and behavior, um, it, it's looking looking good. But of course, we know that the food source in the lagoon is is not great for it. So we are um, we are concerned, and and we have these contingencies for this um, capture and transport, and, and we can implement that 
pretty quickly, but we still have a few things that we have to do and, and get approvals. We're working with the Ahadasat First Nation and New Chalmath First Nation, which has been amazing in terms of the collaboration um, to get this done. And it's, you know, considering, you know, we're, we're 11 days in and, and we've already got uh, a draft plan together. It's pretty amazing. And it goes to show just how, um, how resilient um, and uh, the folks are here to work together and, and make this successful. We're all, it's been a tough week and a half for everyone with, with what's happened, but you know, we're all working together and we're gonna bring in additional experts too with, with what we're proposing if, if we need to, to capture and transport the animal to the outer coast and put it in a net pen until uh, the family unit hopefully passes by and then we can reunite them. That's, that's the plan, uh, draft plan that we're looking at and putting and implementing hopefully if we need to in the near future. Okay, Paul, we got to leave it there, but thank you for this update. We hope uh, the best for you and your team in the next uh, couple of days here that we can get uh, some good news in terms of that calf. Paul Cottrell is a marine mammal rescuer coordinator with Fisheries and Oceans Canada who is working to help free the trapped killer whale calf in B.C.